want to also record the Zoom. So, Wes, we're live. What are we talking about today? Well, I'm going to start right out. We're talking about coaching and the need for coaching and why, why in the world would anybody pay for a coach? So I'm going to ask you that, Kiwi. Why would – and I, your program, Social Media, and before I even let you answer that question, I want to share a testimony because I took your social media class over a year ago. And when I started taking your social media class, I had like eight or 900 friends. I can't remember the exact number. And I'm nearing the 4,000 mark right now. Um, I've seen a growth spurt in my business. But that wasn't the primary reason. But primary reason is to create a network, which is what it's all about. I was doing it all the wrong way. But coaching, yeah, it was a, a leap of faith for me to invest some money. I had previous experiences where I threw some money at some things in I didn't get anything out of it. Mm -hmm. So I figured, what the heck, I'm going to try this one. You offered a free consultation. I got to talk to you. We met uh, on Facebook or on a conversation, actually on the phone, and found out you were a real live person that was going to be there to support me. So that's why I bought into the coaching. But why, how would you tell anybody? Why would they need social media coaching? My gosh, it's just Facebook. Or just coaching and just. Yeah. So um, I, there's a lot here to, to talk about to piggyback off what you were saying. So um, nine years ago, I decided I wanted to better my life. I had a good job. But Jeff and I, we both had jobs. We had two kids in diapers and we didn't know how we were going to pay for daycare, let alone college or a car. But I'm not going to look at my kids and say, we're going to live in poverty and we can't do anything. Right. I wanted, there was something in my spirit. I wanted more. I was a hard worker. I was very driven, but um, I just didn't know what I didn't know. And so network marketing found me and network marketing taught me personal development. But what you hear in network marketing is invest in yourself, invest in yourself, but don't pay for training. So how do you invest in yourself? Like, okay, so that's another whole thing, right? So what sometimes in network marketing, the wrong message is, is given. And I'm thankful that my mentors and people in network marketing didn't give me that advice. They actually told me to go get a coach, go get polished, go, go learn sales. You are in sales. Okay, if you're in sales, you've got to learn the uh, scripts. You've got to learn how to close. You've got to learn confidence. You've got to learn posture. Now we're social media world. So you got to learn confidence. You got to learn posture. People pull out their phones and they have this innate driven spirit. Like they want something more. You know, they see people doing a line. They pull out their phones and they're like, fear. And then some people are, they have no fear of doing it. But they're like, I wonder why nobody's buying for me. And you go look at your Facebook and you're like, well, I wouldn't buy for me. Right? Because there's no skill. There's no skill. So Tony Robbins, if you'll go look him up, him, he just did a little quick video on why people need a coach. And the thing is, the coach don't have to be, the football coach is not on the field playing football, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. The football coach is strategy, the brains, the technical piece, the they can teach, know how to teach, they know how to mentor, they know how to empower. That don't mean they're the best player on the field, right? But what the coach does is hold you accountable, empower you, and help you believe in yourself. So if you have a coach that is making you feel bad or uh, acting like a boss, that's not a coach. A coach meets you where you are, and they lock arms and grow with you. So why do you need a coach? You have to be trained and coached to be, have a different mind today to answer and make decisions on things with a different mind if you want a different result. It's, it's, that is logical, very logical. You did a post the other day about this, Wes. You make a decision expecting a different outcome with the same conscious mind, right? The, so you've got to up your mindset. You have to up your, uh, again, your scheme to make more money if that's what you're looking for a coach for. If I wanted to lose weight, and I did, I've lost 130 pounds. I hired coaches, I had trainers. I had people to teach me to eat. Obviously, I didn't know how to eat. I was 40 years old and 260 pounds, how to eat. So then I hired coaches to teach me what to eat, when to eat. And then I worked with those people for two years. 
processes and then you know mindset coaches etc so that's why you need coaches i hope i answered your question yeah it was really good i want to piggyback off of that because another thing that that i want to interject uh, a need for a coach is well what i didn't realize at the at the time when i took your uh, initial course geez i'm trying to remember i think it was june or may of last year mm -hmm. social media class is that you have you've tried all this stuff um you've 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 went out and done this post and it failed miserably, or you did this live and it failed miserably, or mm -hmm. you know you've already been through all the failures, so now you've already paid the price, so to speak. So I come along and I and I pay a small fee to take your class to pay for to pay you for all the mistakes that you've made that now I yeah. don't have to make. Right? <laughs> yeah, so for your class, like right, I, so. I, I take your class to carve out all the hours you've done studying all these mindset people in science. Like all right. this work, how many hours have you put in the field with just to study mindset? A bunch, a bunch. My wife complains because that's all I do is read, right? I'm always behind a computer typing up something or reading something or watching another video because, you know, so much has changed. Uh, Kibi, so much has changed from when, when we were in school. And, and I go back even farther than you are because I'm older than you are, but when I graduated in the 80s, they, they taught science a certain way. Well, you know, if you really start reading into science today and what they call quantum physics, uh, the things that we were taught in school, that that's not the way things really are. They're finding out things are much different. There's been so much advancement in technology. There's been so much advancement in, in physics and science. And now they're actually, uh, well, I, can't, I don't have time to go into this, right? But... Well, look at social quantum media. Physics, quantum physics actually ties God into the picture. You know, it used to always be science and religion were two totally different entities, and there used to be debates over science and evolution or creation and evolution. Well, now they're coming together and they're starting to see, hey, God does exist, and they can prove it. You know, it's and and that's a whole other story in its case, but that's how things have changed, mm -hmm. and that's why mindset is so important because now we yeah. understand that our very thoughts and our very emotions are what are attracting and bringing things into our lives. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that. Right, right. And so for a live like this, we're not here to change anybody's mind. If you're like totally against training, getting good luck, God bless you, go do your deal. But there could be people watching like me nine years ago, if I'd have been fed that advice, don't pay for training, I wouldn't be where I am today and I'm not where I want to be, but I thank God I ain't where I was, you know, like we are truly thriving from the action we've taken and the training I've received. So I very blessed that I had my own mind and I made my own decisions and I didn't let anybody stray me from hiring a coach or hiring trainers, even with the negative talk out here. But um, yes, there's bad coaches and trainers. Yes, there's bad people in every industry. There's bad people in network marketing. There's bad people in the job I'm in, a corporate America. There's bad people that served your meal if you went out to a restaurant. <laughs> you know, like we can't control that. Wes, you work in the hospital. There's bad people in the hospital. So the thing is, you can't judge a whole industry off of one bad experience. There's some good coaches out there, good trainers that put people before profits. Yes, ma'am. Okay? Yes, I do earn money as a coach and I should be paid for my time, but people come first. That's why I offer free consults and I do, I do, you do get to talk to me and you get, get to meet me and that's important to me. Community, collaboration, commitment. Um, but yeah, let's talk about that. Wes, why are so many people so scared? Like just so scared to take action and everything. Well, most of it's because of the way they've been conditioned. It's called limiting beliefs, and that's something we really dive into in my five-week course, is limiting beliefs. And it, truth be told, when we go back and find out where these beliefs stem from, most people realize, I didn't pick that belief up. Why do I have that belief? Somebody made you believe that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my wife thinks it's crazy that you don't see me sit around and watch TV much anymore because I think the last presidential election convinced me how our world's being run and it's being controlled by our social, by our media. I mean, just yeah. watch what they're programming into our minds every day. And, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you ask media and see the message they are sending out, you think we were, we're about ready to go into a racial riot or racial war. And I don't want to get into that. But truth be told, it's not, it's not. A lot of that's blown out of proportion because that's what they want you to believe. 
Right. And so people get conditioned and uh, they develop these beliefs over the course of time that actually keep them frozen in fear. And one of the things, and, and I'll share this as a, a little tip for anybody who's watching, if you really understood what fear was, uh, you've heard the acronym before, false evidence appearing real. That's very true because all fear is, fear is not a future-based emotion. It's a future-based emotion. You're fearing the worst possible outcome for an event that's supposed to happen in the future. Does the future ever arrive? No, because the future is always in the future. So if you think of it that way, once you understand the premise and the definition and the reality of what fear actually is, our emotions are all within our own little world up here in this gray matter. And we can't control that. and We can change it. It's one of the things we talk about in my class. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to throw one at you on social media because I've got some friends that market products on social media um, on several different platforms. Uh, maybe share with those watching. What platforms do you teach in your social media class? And is there a right way and a wrong way to market a product on social media? And in particular, can you talk about attraction marketing? Okay. So a couple of things here. Number one, ma uh, social media is like math. You have to to add then subtract then you can multiply and divide you can't go in the other orders right you can't divide before you add it happen right I have an 11 year old and we're teaching math concepts now so I'm in the books learning this like oh my gosh pull my hair out then I have a third grader learning multiplication okay you got to add subtract multiply divide then you learn like algebra and the please excuse my dear aunt Sally stuff remember that Wes that's what we're doing <laughs> PEMDAS, they call it PEMDAS now. I'm like, you mean please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. <laughs> so, but here's the thing, like we all know that, right? Well, with social media, why would we think that we could just go watch a couple videos or go mimic someone online or, or some guru's webinar and then just go make millions online? Don't work like that. It's hard work. It's hard work. Just like if I was meeting people at the Starbucks, I'm meeting them every night. I'm going through the numbers, do knocking on doors, making calls. Same deal, right? It's just that you're online. So a couple things with this. I have a couple classes. There's no one class. If any coach or trainer tells you, oh, this is the magic class, they're lying. You're going to get a result out of my class, which you will not know at all. You've got to build on it. We have social media. We have the intro and the art. So the intro and then the more advanced where you're learning the art and skill. Then you can move into like the nest. You cannot come in the nest until you've taken that class. It's kind of a prerequisite. Then you can branch out and go into either stories or branding. And like what you said with things have changed from high school, man, social media changes week to week. You go learn YouTube, go pull it up again, and everything's changed. YouTube's notorious for changing all their buttons. So you got to be engaged in the field, taking action and doing the work. And as a social media coach and trainer, I build five businesses online, so I'm in the field. I'm in the field with you. I'm learning. So then we have the whole issue of um, people trying to mimic others. So I have a couple messages right now. The ongoing thing is this new little logo you can put on your uh, videos with on YouTube and Facebook. And they're asking me about it. And I'm like, you going to spend 10 or 15 hours trying to figure that out? Or are you going to go post something? So I'm a realist. I'm logical. And I'm like, I work full time, have two kids, have five businesses. I ain't got time for all that crap. You can learn all the logos, fonts, and the purdy stuff. If you don't recruit and promote yourself right online, you won't get one client. So you can spend 10 hours building a pretty little logo that pops up because somebody else did it in like a makeup group. You don't know what they spent to do that because apps cost money and marketing costs money. Other things we see, oh, well, this person has 200,000 followers. So how many clients do they have? How many client paid clients do they have? Everything is smoke and mirrors online. Don't ever forget that. It's they want you to see what they want you to see, right? So I believe in building right, building organic. And when I get a true customer, I get paid. It's a real person. When I get a follower, it's a real person, right? So you grow that right. Again, people before profits, you have loyalty. 
So I teach and train loyalty. You want a loyal client, not just some new fan that follows you. That's garbage. The other thing is ads. People spend money on ads. If you're not willing to put a hundred grand in on ads, then quit paying 30 and $50 here and there because it don't work. It don't work. There is no magic pill online. There's no magic pill to lose weight. There's no magic pill in life. Quit looking for magic pills. But when you're ready to get to work and learn skill, you can bust it up online. I teach my team uh, simple concepts that work and they grow online. And back to the question at hand is attraction marketing. That's everything. You've got to build skill around that. And everything you do, every minute you do something online or don't, you're attracting your market. So think about that. If your store's closed, you're doing nothing, then what are you going to get more of? Nothing. If you're out here online pushing product, 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 what are you going to get? You're going to run off a crowd is what you're going to do. So there is a skill and strategy that works to, uh, to networking online. And guess what? It's a process. You can't just come through class and do a few things and think in three months you're going to be a millionaire. Don't work like that. Anybody that tells you that is you better run because work takes work. Business takes work. Online marketing takes work. And if you're not willing to work, then keep your day job. But if you're willing to work, I'm a hard worker. I want to work for what I have. I don't mind working. Just teach me what I need to do, right? And I feel like that's what my classes do. They teach you what you need to do to get you in the direction to take action. But what I see happen for a lot of people is fear. They're, fear, they're worried about what people think. They're worried about rejection they don't want to go live because the way they look like what the heck get out there and do it if you opened up a gas station would you be standing there saying well i don't like how i look so i can't open my doors like what the heck nobody <laughs> cares again that goes back to the me monster right so many people have me 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 focus on me my feelings my emotions my problems nobody cares everybody's cared and wrapped up in their own selves so we just got to get out there and do it and make it happen for our families. And look, your family's got to be worth it because there's going to be some tough days and you've got to be worth it and know you're worth it to not quit and not give up and stay with it. So I know that was a lot to spit out, but attraction marketing is everything. Um, the, the harvest I have today, I've been building online for eight years. Even when people are like, why would you get on Facebook and build online? I'm like, why in the world would you? I didn't listen to that garbage, but everything that's happening for me today, I've been working at eight years. This is not an overnight. I just got online and started posting something last week. This is years of trust and influence with people and building relationships. And at 3 a.m., I'm messaging people and commenting and, you know, I'm doing the work online where everybody else is watching TV or going to bed, right? So it takes a lot of work and I do, I'm very open about that. There's no magic peel. Watch the gurus out there. Well, I want to piggyback off something you just, you just said. And, you know, when I first got started in, uh, in network marketing, um, you know, I had been in network marketing before and the belly to belly stuff. I always said, well, it didn't work for me. Well, truth be told, it's because I was fearful. And so I was looking for social media to be my way out because I could be that you know, the heavy set guy sitting behind the computer that's telling the girls that he's five foot 10 and weighs 180, right? And he's buff and all this, right? I thought I could hide behind a computer would give mm -hmm. me courage. But when it came down to it and I started posting things and started realizing that in order to be successful on social media, <laughs> you've got to be authentic. Right. You've got to be a real person. And it, and it yeah. goes right back to, Wes, you got to overcome your fear. And that's what drove me into the studying and the self-development stuff that got me into what I'm teaching in my class because so many of us allow our emotions and thoughts to literally run our lives and it should be the other way around right I mean we all have the spirit inside of us which should be running the show which should be you know you've heard Jesus take the wheel I mean we need to get control of the ship and not let the mind full of thoughts and fears rule our roost and rule our world which is in effect what we do so we have to overcome fear and understand who we are at the core to be able to progress forward. 
-hmm. but social media is not a quick fix and you're not going to get rich overnight and you still got to overcome the same hurdles if you were building this business or any other business belly to belly in mm -hmm. the trenches talking to people one on one you can't there's no way of getting around it you got to learn how to develop relationships you got to learn how to be a people person you got to learn how to work with people mm -hmm. and I'll I just use gratitude to overcome because I'm just thankful I can do it from home. I remembered the days of putting my kids in the car after working all day and meeting people and getting stood up and then coming back home with stuck. You know, we have to do it again the next day. And we would drive an hour sometimes and we had our kids dragging them out till midnight and then doing it all over again the next day. I remember those days. I am not doing that. So for me, I'm like, you want to stand me up on a Zoom? I don't care. I'm home anyway. Like, what the heck? You want to reject me on Facebook? I don't care. I'll just go get another friend. Like, whatever. I've, I've had the rough times, you know, and I just use gratitude to say, you know what? I'm home anyway with my family, so I can build this thing online. So for me, I'm just super grateful that I live in, a, in, a, in an era, in a revolution. I feel like we're in a revolution. We're in a time we can capitalize on social media and Anything you do well, you can make money, whether it's selling jewelry, making lotion, uh, selling clothing. I mean, we could be selling right now online and making money, and we're in an era now. The people who figure it out are going to get rich. And it's, yes. it's a, all of us. Yeah. Funny you say that, because I remember when I took your social media class, there was a lady selling T-shirts mm -hmm. who has learned how to use your social media training, and she's doing rather well for herself. Yep. I see you wearing her T-shirts. I see her posting all over the Internet. So yep. it works for, for many different types of businesses. And, hey, one last thing that I'm going to throw out there, um, the beauty about social media, if you learn how to use it, Kiwi, you've got an organization, you've got a business in South Africa. And it all, it started with a, uh, your story, and I, won't, I don't want to tell your story, it should be for you to tell, but you bumped into this lady, you asked her if she was on Facebook, she mm -hmm. added you as a friend, and now, what, a year and a half, two years later, she's a significant person in your business, correct? Yeah, yeah, she's actually a white gold in my business, a growing gold diamond, and a low bruella. She's out of South Africa, has a huge team. They have to do triple what we do with. She's really like a double diamond compared to what we do. Um, because their PV's lower in South Africa, but yeah, just incredible. We ran into an, each other in Minnesota. She asked if I was in a multi-level in U.S., and I said, yeah. I didn't know her, so th because I'm a social media person, I'm like, well, she's in South Africa. We can't really call each other, right? That costs like crazy money, so I'm like, are you on Facebook? Everybody's on Facebook. <laughs> Everybody's on Facebook, right? She's like, yes, I am. We friended each other, and boom, boom. I sent her videos, she got started, and now she's growing and teaching her team the same thing. So that's the other beauty of social media. You can connect with people all over the world. You can grow global business online. So, yep, I love it. Well, we'll hop off. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Drop a comment. Let us know you watched. If you have any questions, reach out to me or Wes. We both have um, openings in our classes. Wes has a mindset class called Yes, You Can. And it's five weeks. He'll be, he will, um, have that available May 1st for anybody watching who would like to join this class. And then I have multiple classes as well. If you want to reach out to me, feel free to do that as well through Messenger. So we will get to every comment. Thank you so much for watching on live. I'm going to stop the recording. Thanks, y'all. See y'all. Thanks, Kibi. See you guys.